In a previous video, I talked a bit about TSMC and its industry-leading technology. I talked about how it rose to the industry thanks to its innovative new business model. And I talked about how it worked closely with Apple to build its latest generation chips. And now there's been recent news about Intel and that's caused a whole bunch of media scrutiny about you know, American industry and ma American manufacturing and just how amazing TSMC is and all blah, 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 blah. There's a temptation to attribute all of TSMC's successes to Taiwan simultaneously taking the opportunity to bemoan the decline of American technology and cutting-edge development. It's a common refrain nowadays that America no longer leads the world in terms of cutting-edge technology. In this video, I want to set the self-hating aside and talk about something I've been thinking about recently. Taiwan and TSMC deserve a lot of credit. They did and are doing great things right now. But at the same time, TSMC's success is not 100% theirs to claim. The reality is that semiconductor manufacturing at the bleeding edge is hard, and the truth is that hard things are done together as a team, a global team. This is especially the case when it came to developing the next generation of fapping technology, an etching technique known as EUV, extreme ultraviolet lithography. It actually uses x-rays, but they changed it a while back. Looking at its 40-year commercialization process is a demonstration of just how international this technology is. Faster chips push the rest of the industry forward and open up new possibilities for advancement. Think about the example of artificial intelligence. Why all of a sudden is AI a thing now? The theoretical techniques behind the latest, most exciting leaps forward in AI, neural networks and the like, come about because of hardware developments making GPUs cheap and accessible to the general public. The techniques themselves have been around for decades. Huge generalization here, but generally, one generation of chips gets better and because, uh, because better techniques have been uh, developed to put more transistors on them. Lithography techniques are used to etch transistors on pieces of silicon. Better lithography correlates to more transistor-dense chips and thus better performing chips. Since around 2003, the semiconductor industry was using a type of lithography tool to create chips, called a 193 nanometer scanner. A number of clever tricks helped squeeze more improvements out of this older scanner technology, but eventually they got to where you can't refine it anymore. The industry needed something else to keep pushing hardware technology forward, something revolutionary rather than evolutionary. I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to explain exactly what EUV is and how it works. If you want the 10,000 foot view, you can watch this fascinating YouTube video. But I am going to talk a little bit about how it came to be. All the way back in 1986, Japanese researcher Hiro Kinoshita began experimenting with new, more powerful wavelengths of light, essentially X-rays, in order to etch transistors onto silicon. He had been working on using X-rays to do so since 1983, and people thought he was crazy. That same year, a group of Americans, Silfast and Wood, from Bell Labs requested a grant from the U.S. government for developing a sodium laser to do lithography. The U.S. government thought they were crazy. They published a paper after their rejection and Bell Labs decided to fund them for the next two years. Around the same time, a team in Lawrence Livermore led by Andrew Harriluk starts experimenting with X-ray sources for lithography. So you got three teams, one in Japan and two in the US, working together on an idea uh, to use X-rays to etch transistors onto microchips. They discover that they are all working on the same concept and then meet in beautiful Monterey Bay, California in 1989 to exchange ideas and join together. Four years later, in 1993, the U.S. government changes its mind, investing $12 million along with $12 million more from Intel to develop the science project into a new type of lithography tool so to create the next generation of microchips. Over the next three decades, teams in Japan and the United States backed by American dollars from government and industry, worked together on turning this science project into a commercial technology. This includes creating new techniques and tools to overcome the various technological barriers in the way of producing chips at scale. Over time, they took on additional backers. Starting 1997, European institutions got involved. You got organizations like the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research, working on the fantastically complicated components to meet UV work, Taiwan and TSMC starts getting involved in around 2006 with major contributions from Taiwanese universities like NCTU and NTU. This was truly an industry-wide undertaking that spanned every Western country, uh, every country in the West. Finally, in 2016, the technology is ramping up and seems to be ready for commercialization. 
ASML is a company in the Netherlands developing the foundry machines that unites this technology together. But ASML, the company, also takes a big portion of funding from Intel, Samsung, TSMC, and one of its important subsidiaries, Symer, is based in San Diego. So it's more than just a European company. I don't want people to think, uh, to, to apply nationalist views on this. It's not a European company. It would not be the same company if it were just to be an exclusively European company. ASML is the unification of a various number of Western-oriented industry uh, knowledge. These EUV fab machines are huge and expensive, something like 100 and $150 million each, and the size of a school bus. ASML flies each machine out to TSMC's foundry building in Taiwan. Uh, Intel and Samsung take delivery machines as well. And even then, it takes another two to three years of hard work in partnership with the, in partnership with TSMC and ASML to tune the machine and replicate the results ASML demonstrated in demo conditions in actual production conditions. So in conclusion, TSMC's bleeding edge fabbing technology is not just a quote unquote Taiwanese achievement. It is a Western technology achievement which involved multiple countries in Europe, Asia, and America. The individual companies competed with each other in the larger market, but when technological limitations threatened that larger market, the industry banded together to figure out a solution. TSMC is a Taiwanese company. Its most valuable fabs are in Taiwan. It was founded by the Taiwanese government, and some 6% of its shares are still held directly by the government. The vast majority of its employees are in Taiwan. The Taiwanese government subtly covers the financial risk of TSMC's brand new $17 billion fab in my hometown of Tainan. Yet at the same time, much of its success is the result of work beyond the island's borders and is reliant on Taiwan's close ties to the West, Japan, Europe, especially the Netherlands, and the United States. Severing those ties will cause the company to founder. Just a couple thoughts I wanted to talk about. Um, hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.